Hello, my name is Mandy Saw and I'm the director and co-founder of Artscape. I just would like to give you a brief introduction as, about the video you're about to see. Artscape works alongside vulnerable and disabled adults in a unique way, drawing out people's creativity in a safe, welcoming environment, accepting people as they are as a means to building up their self-esteem and confidence. We felt we were well placed to take on um, Health Watch's challenge of gathering people's information on how the NHS does or doesn't work for them. Most of the people that come to Artscape are quite form phobic, so we decided we'd just go and do what we normally do, which is to go into certain sheltered housing and other organisations and, and, uh, and work alongside them, doing a workshop, gathering information um, and gaining confidence with each other. And in return, they would um, tell us their views on the NHS via a dictaphone. The, the video you're going to see has got no um, images of people on it. It's just people's hands, people working, and their work, and literally a voiceover of their thoughts and feelings. Hopefully you'll find it interesting. It's quite thought-provoking at times, and it should last for about 10 minutes. Thank you very much. I think the nurses, they, they do the main job, really. And yeah. What about the GP? <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, if you want to wait a week, yeah, go to your GP. Or over a week. And, the, and then when you actually get the appointment, you have to wait like weeks for something to happen. Yeah. How easy is it to get an appointment? Do you find that quite easy? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. More often no than not. If you phone up at half eight in the morning. Yeah. They tell you to phone up at eight o'clock in the morning for the to book an appointment on that day, but by the time you phone up, the appointments are already gone. Yet yeah, there's no pre bookable appointments to get. Mm -hmm. So how are you supposed to you've got a plan like four weeks ahead before you're gonna be ill or something? How can and you plan to be I, ill? You just load you with pills and hope for the best. Like, so you try seeing them but oh no, you can't see them because they're what they call a locum, so they're not there permanently. No, no. So you think, well, the doctors that you have got there permanently, you can't see because they're always fully booked. So then you try and ask for the locum and they go, no, you can't see them because they're not here now. And you just yeah. think, well, who can I see? Because I think, personally, you should have a doctor-patient relationship where you actually know them and see them when you want to see them. You just have to kind of cope with who you get lumbered with, really. And if you don't like that doctor, then you're not inclined to tell them as much about your problems as what you would if you had a doctor you like. Hello, I think the NHS should give patients more time, a certain amount of time for appointments, yeah. appointments, yeah. You know, I, I can't afford them at the moment. Are you talking about care for the elderly now? There's a lot to be said. Mm. You know, actual hospital treatment and doctors, is, I can't say no. Apart from getting appointments at the doctors, you can't get an appointment. You've got to try try and get there sort of 8 o'clock in the morning. The queue, you can queue up for half past you have to ring back at 8 in the morning, haven't you? Yeah, but then they, then they don't answer, and then when they do answer, there's no... They're overworked. Bless them, the ones that are there. You know, there's not even... Uh, the GPs, not knowing what GP you're going to be able to see, you can't always get an appointment with your own for weeks on end. You know, so if you're really ill and you want to see your own GP, you've had it. You've got to take pop luck. The thing is that when we came in here first, it, it was extra care, and I've got it printed on the thing, it was their 25th anniversary, extra care sheltered housing, and that's what we came in for. We are now in, we don't have managers, we don't have wardens, we have independent living officers, ILO. Independent means you're on your own, living means you haven't died yet. And I said I couldn't think of one for O, and so my sister suggested occupant. <laughs> I am more than unimpressed with the adult mental health. They discharged me apparently because I kept missing appointments. Um, the appointments I missed, one was um, when it was snowing and they couldn't get in and they cancelled it. 
and said they'd let me know when I want when they wanted me to go back in never ever got told and then got discharged they're not there to help I feel not at all um, last thing they said to me was they didn't know how they could help me I've been with them many years I've never ever been offered any counselling I started a CBT course halfway through the chap left um, then I, I got offered another CBT course halfway through it, it finished so none of them were com completed um, they're not there to help every time I phone them or ask for help um, I don't get I've asked desperately for an advocate um, because I lost mine over a year ago um, they keep telling me that somebody from Mind is going to phone me and become an advocate. I, other than, uh, so I'm being left to deal with everything on my own, which I find very, very hard, and it makes me very ill. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Not impressed at all with the adult mental health team. They've actually uh, made me worse. If that, if that's, uh, if that can happen. For me, mental health provision um, hasn't been all that great. Um, um, I found that there was very little joined up thinking, as in the doctor would contact the mental health team and sometimes they would get in contact with me and sometimes they wouldn't. Um, I felt really let down by them. I would go every week, um, well I would, I would attempt to attend every week and halfway there um, the person who I was supposed to be seeing um, ran, rang in sick so they eventually called me but I was halfway there all the time. Um, eventually they got me, um, well they, they wanted me to go to a group in Fairham but um, because I have difficulty travelling um, they didn't seem to understand that that was part of my mental health issues. So eventually um, they got me to see someone in Petersfield, but um, that only lasted for 12 weeks. Um, and then after that, I was just dumped, really. Um, I've still got the same issues um, and I'm getting no help from them. I just want people to listen to me and they don't care. And that hurts. My experience of the NHS has been both positive and negative. One of the things I find most difficult is so um, I've been recently diagnosed with a bipolar or schizoaffective disorder. Um, you know, the bigger picture, I get very frustrated and confused because I don't understand what really what's happening next, what's going on, where I am in the great scheme of things. And it'd be useful if there would be a follow-up or a review or even something written down so I can understand. And it would help me and I'd probably be less frustrated and less of a nuisance and not ringing up all of the time. Because I, because I would be more clear about what's happening. My experience of the mental health service is generally a good one. Um, in particular, I'd like to um, say that I think the home visit team are particularly good and they were very helpful to me and helped me to adjust to life outside a hospital. Um, on the downside, less positive side, the out of our service is has got particularly bad i phoned them some time a while ago got put through to the samaritans first of all i mean they, they do a great job but they're not trained to help people with mental health problems basically i've been in the mental health services now for over 17 years today it is absolutely rubbish you can go from having a support worker and CPN, get a letter in the post and being told that you haven't got a CPN anymore or a support worker. Um, I've been recently told that I'm um, in something called a practitioner's group, um, which is this one lady that I go to see, which is all of half an hour, once a month. As for being able to phone up, and talk to people on the system um, usually you get um, them tell you that they're busy or they, they can get somebody to ring you back and I was having a really bad time with my bipolar and feeling really low and having 
psychotic and paranoia, paranoid thoughts, I phoned up and I spoke to somebody, told them how I was thinking and feeling, told that I would get a phone call back that same day. I never received a phone call back at, at all. Um, then when I went to see my support worker and my CPN the next time, I told them exactly what was going on. And it was almost like it was dismissed. Um, the only support I feel I do have is once a week I come to Artscape and I've got people around me that have had the same issues. I think the mental health services and the NHS services should be more willing um, to support patients uh, more readily. Um, my own experience is that it took 11 months of, of to and fro from a GP surgery, getting sent to external counselling services that I wasn't even appropriate for, but because of complex issues or more than one issue, I've had to chase or support. The GPs are sending to services where it's okay for a small issue, they aren't able to deal with it themselves. I am one of the few lucky ones who uh, has a good CPM and a good service and a good setup. But I do think it's all down to my CPN only that I've got the good backup and a good GP who acts fast when I need it. But I must admit I am one of the lucky ones. Um, I will say my GP is very good and I actually got in to see him very quickly. Um, he actually ended up up in my medication and he phoned the mental health services himself for me. Mental health professionals forget that we're human beings as well. Our problems aren't nine to five.